Hello and welcome back to Alice Talks Football and in today's video I'm going to be talking about all the latest Manchester United transfer news today. We're going to be talking about Jane and Sancho, Ansu Fati and Gabrielle Magalhães as well as Manchester United signing a 16 year old Norwegian youngster for the academy. I'm going to start with the Jane and Sancho story and talk about why the deal's not off what these mind games mean and why Jane and Sancho is still likely to come to Manchester United and just give you an update on everything you need to know regarding Jane and Sancho and the news is the deal on, is the deal off. I'm going to be giving you the news on Gabrielle and Nancy Fatty. Is it reliable? Is it going to happen? And more. So make sure you hit that like button, subscribe down below, share this video and let's start with the transfer news regarding Jane and Sancho. Now, a week ago, it looked like Manchester United were going to sign Jadon Sancho. We know that personal terms have been agreed. Jadon Sancho wants to come to Manchester United. It's just between Manchester United and Dortmund to agree on the price. And Dortmund had sent this. Uh, and Dortmund had set this August tenth deadline because obviously that's when they go on their pre-season tour. And they were like to Manchester United, "You get Sancho, you must get him before August tenth." And it actually looked like for a bit that Manchester United were actually going to sign Sancho before August tenth, which is very un Manchester United. Like as a Manchester United fan. We know that it takes Manchester United a good six to eight weeks to get a deal done. It starts with hype around the deal, then the deal's off because Ed Woodward won't pay the money, slows down, boom, Man United have signed them. Kind of happened with Fernandez, that's a good example. But we know with Manchester United does take a good six to eight weeks to actually sign a player because, you know, unlike Chelsea, we're not very efficient in the transfer market. We'll do anything to pay five million pounds less. So we're all a bit surprised. We're like, wait, Sancho's going to come like this week. You know, there was a lot of talk that Sancho was going to come this week and we're all kind of surprised because that's very un Manchester United like. Well as we know Sancho did not come before the 10th and Sancho got on a plane to Switzerland for Ge for Borussia Dortmund's pre-season tour on the 10th and that then got a few Manchester United fans worried is he not coming and then the Dortmund director Sorg he came out and was like Sancho's expected to be with us next season we plan around Sancho, Sancho will be in the squad, Sancho's not moving and he made all these comments and a lot of Manchester United fans were worried. They're like, the Sancho deal's off then. The Sancho deal is off then. The, the director's come out and said that Sancho is staying. The deal is off. Now, is that worrying? Yeah, a bit, but not particularly. Because we know with Manchester United that we really want Jane Sancho. And Ed Woodward knows he cannot mess this up. Ed Woodward just wants to see how cheap he can get him for. And I think that Ed Woodward will step up and pay the money. Now, Dortmund director is saying Sancho's not for sale anymore because they didn't do it by the August 10th deadline. But we know right now, talks are still going on. So that, that is not true. And we know Borussia Dortmund, they did this with Usman Dembele. They said he was staying, he was not going to leave. And then as soon as Barcelona got the cash out, they sold. Because Dortmund is a feeder club. Dortmund is run like a business. Dortmund want to profit off players. And as soon as Manchester United show them the 108 million they want for Jadon Sancho, they will sell him. If Manchester United come with 108 million, they will sell him, okay? I tell you this now. So oh, so basically the whole Sancho deal relies on Manchester United offering Dortmund the money they want. And I think Manchester United will. We'll take a couple of weeks trying to negotiate it, but I think Manchester United will offer Dortmund that 108 million because I know we can't afford to lose him. And if Osh means going for like 60 million plus 20 million and add-ons 80 million, Sancho is worth 108 million. We've got Champions League football. We need Sancho. We're Manchester United. We can afford that. I think, you know, we're going to be some fifth fifth faffing. It might take a month or so, but I do think Manchester United will show Dortmund that money. And we know how Dortmund works. Once they're shown that money, they won't reject it. Reliable journalists like Fabrizio Romano made some comments on this. He talked about Michael Sorg, Borussia Dortmund director. We plan with Jamie Sancho. He'll play with us next season. I think that answers all the questions. He quoted that. He also said, to clarify, Jamie Sancho has not signed a new contract with BBB. We already had extended his contract a year ago in secret until 2023, Sorg says. Then Fabrizio Romano commented on these words saying, Sancho's situation after Sorg's words. Manchester United find it unusual that Borussia Dortmund insists they work through an agent, not through them directly. This has always been a problem of the negotiations. Manchester United are also frustrated with the pace of the discussion. Borussia Dortmund made it very clear by their side they're asking 120 million about add-ons or Sancho will not leave the summer. BBB are convinced he can stay one more year, as Sorg said today. Um, so Fabrizio Romano basically just said like Manchester United need to pay the money. It's been a bit frustrating. They're still in talks. It's just a frustrating situation. And I think it's Manchester United. It will take a while. But I think we'll just be like, yeah, go on, have the money. I think we will. Simon Stone, reliable British journalist, came out and said, been pointing out Dortmund said Dembele wasn't leaving, then sold him. Important to note the fee, 96.8 million rising to 135.5 million. The club played hardball and got what they wanted. It's clear Manchester United need to significantly strengthen to close the gap to top two. Scored nowhere near deep enough. So Simon Stone saying like Manchester United 
will probably end up paying the money because they need to and he knows what Dortmund are like, they'll end up accepting a bit. If we offer Dortmund 108 million, they will accept it, come on, it's Borussia Dortmund. So that's why you don't need to worry too much on the Sancho deal. If the Sancho deal falls through, it's because Ed Woodward's messed up. It's because Ed Woodward's and the Glazers don't want to pay. That's the only reason it'll fall through is because Woodward's messed up. Because like personal terms, everything's been agreed. Now the next story is about Gabriel Magalhães, a Manchester United target that I've talked about a little bit on this channel already. He's also linked to Arsenal Everton and now Basically, the uh, Evening Standard came out with a little report saying, Standard Sport underscans Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is still trying to find the ideal partner for Harry Maguire in a bid to create a Premier League title winning defence. Victor Lindelof has been the most consistently used alongside the £80 million centre back, but Solskjaer is weighing up options from within Old Trafford and outside, with questions faced over United's vulnerability when faced with pace. As I've talked about a lot on this channel, Lindelof and Maguire are both solid centre backs, but they don't work together because they're both quite slow. He continues to talk about how Nathan Ake was among potential targets before his £40 million move from Bournemouth to Manchester City. They also say Khaled Koulibaly was a dream target, blah, 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 blah. His £70 million price tag was too expensive. They are now monitoring Lil's Gabriel Magalhães, whose £20 validation makes him a more affordable option. I think this is pretty much what we already know. Manchester United are monitoring Gabriel Magalhães. He's only going to be about £20 million pounds. He's quick, he's young. It's a good, affordable centre-back. And I think once we've got Sancho over the line with we'll focus on someone like him or someone like Grealish afterwards but I do think we're interested in Gabriel Magalhães I do think we'd like him but I do think he's not a priority priority I think Sancho and Grealish then probably him or Sancho and Van Bruyne probably him but I think Gabriel will leave Lille and go to a Premier League club. Now they also talk about Ansu Fati. They do an article talking about Ansu Fati where they say Manchester United are considering a move for Barcelona winger Ansu Fati as a backup option to Jadon Sancho report DRA Sport. Yeah not the most reliable outlet. United were also linked with Fati earlier in the year, according to ESPN. Their interest was immediately not backed by Barcelona. The 17-year-old now has a release clause in the region of £150 million in his contract, which would make him more expensive option than Sancho. Meanwhile, Standard Sport understands United remain desperate to conclude a deal, with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer having no real alternative in mind. Even the evening Standard say, you know what, we don't believe this. I think Manchester United would like Anthony Fati and have an interest in him. But Sancho is our number one choice. We don't have a backup to Sancho, and if we're not going to pay £108 million for Sancho, why would we pay 150 million for Ansu Fati? He's a great young talent, but I don't think Ansu Fati is leaving Barcelona anytime soon, if you want my honest opinion. But I thought I'd report on that story because a few people were getting quite hyped around it. Like, if we don't get Sancho, we'll get Fati. I'm like, if we don't pay 108 million for James Sancho, Manchester United will not spend 150 million on Ansu Fati. Manchester United also signed a young Norwegian player called Isaac Hansen Arun. He's going to go straight into the academy. We signed quite a few academy players for cheap. So it shows that we're really invested in youth and getting academy players through into the first team in the future. But that's all the transfer news regarding Manchester United. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have not already, please hit that like button, subscribe down below, share this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. The latest Manchester United transfer news today, my update.